A high top, make your way from the carving stations and the pasta. And we'll get the show on the road. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Wollaston Golf Club as we celebrate and appreciate. 29 years of Bob Dunham's service as executive director of the Francis Wimet Scholarship Fund. Bobby? <laughs> Bobby always had a very well-honed parade wave for these outings. But how appropriate that we do this at Wollaston. Bob goes back so far with Wollaston that there was old Wally and new Wally. Bob caddied here. But then fast forward his adult life, and in 1992, he was the communications chair and part of the steering committee for the U.S. Junior Amateur Tournament that was held here. And it was no small feat to be in charge of that tournament and the communications because the media throng was so big because it was Tiger Woods chasing his second U.S. Junior, of which he won three. So there was a lot of interest going on then. This is a family club, obviously, and uh, we'd like to welcome Bob's family who's joining us today. His wife, Teresa, son, Matt, Matt's wife, Leanne, who are in the back of the room. Teresa, you may remember from many We Met events. And Teresa was just as much a part, and Bob's family just as much a part of his success as executive director. Uh, Teresa's sister, Patty, her husband, David, and son, Christopher, are also joining us. And there's somebody who's not joining us who's a Wollaston member, but couldn't be here tonight. Uh, time, uh, time doesn't wait for anyone, and that's Bill Foley. Uh, Bill was a past Mass Golf Association president, uh, past We Met Society president, We Met Fund president, and was a mentor to Bob, somebody who meant a lot to him. And uh, so Bill's presence is felt here today. Uh, we miss Bill dearly. Uh, but. Bob uh, also had two pets, Snowball and Max. <laughs> Snowball actually lived with Bob's father for a period of time and used to come over here as a regular and was the only dog ever allowed in the Wollaston Golf Club clubhouse. <laughs> and believe it or not, Bob's father used to order Snowball steaks. <laughs> now, Snowball was a Bichon, so just picture that for a second. But. It's a club that's meant a lot to Bob and his family over the years, and we're glad to be here. So let's quickly take you through Bob's career. Bob, as a schoolboy, was a caddy here at Wollaston. He was caddy master at Milton Hoosick and rode his bike all over Milton, chasing gigs and money. Uh, when Bob graduated from college, he worked for the Boston Globe. He covered high school, college, professional sporting events. But he also compiled the old tee to green listing of lo local golf club tournaments. Now. Imagine for people who aren't familiar with something like Tee to Green that the results of the Wollaston Golf Club member guest would make the paper every week. Those were the types of things that Bob compiled. Bob moved on from the Globe. He was Director of Media Relations in 1972 for the New England Whalers of the World Hockey Association that before they moved to Hartford they were splitting time between the Boston Garden and Boston Arena. Bob was the youngest Director of Public Relations in the World Hockey Association at the time and even in pro sports. In 72 and 73, the Whalers won the World Hockey Association Championship. Bob has a championship ring, but Bob can't skate. <laughs> well, quite an achievement, Bobby. Well done. Bobby went on to be the Assistant Sports Information Director at Harvard. He was the Sales Director for the Promotions Group, and there was a golf coach. But one of his favorite assignments was in 1976, he was a research associate for ABC Sports with the Summer Olympic Games in Montreal. He's got great Rune Arlish stories and Jim McKay stories, but that was one of uh, his favorite items to be a part of. Bob worked in his own a little bit in TV and video. He produced and hosted his own half-hour sports wrap-up show for high schools in the area. It aired on Channel 25. But a lot of people will know Bob, uh, as he's told many stories over the years about his involvement with Cigna, which he joined in 1980. He was part of the special events team at Cigna. He recruited PG Tour and tennis stars to be around for customer events. 
Uh, he coordinated sponsorships with the Greater Hartford Open, the Hartford Whalers, of which Cigna was an investor, and many other sponsorship and community service activities throughout the Greater Hartford area. Now, if you've been around Bob, he'll, he's very happy to tell you stories. First of all, of the time that Mark O'Meara did an outing at uh, Marion, and they snapped a picture, and right before they snapped the picture with the wicker basket, Mark ripped up Bob's shirt, stuck the wicker basket underneath Bob's shirt, and what Mark signed was, Bob, I never knew you cared, Mark O'Meara. <laughs> so uh, he did outings with Gary McCord, who, when he was with the Mac O'Grady group, uh, bored Bob's customers to death, uh, got a little esoteric with giving lessons to the clients, uh, at Congressional Golf Club, when Bob was hosting an outing there, the starter extorted Bob for probably over $250 in cash to get all of the customer groups off the first tee. And then there was Hubert Green, one of Bob's favorite Cigna celebrities. Uh, when he won the Greater Hartford Open one year, there was a nice trophy presentation and he was awarded a clock. And Hubert, immediately upon receiving the clock, said, to Teresa Donovan, who was standing right by there, Teresa, this will look great in your bathroom. <laughs> My other favorite Hubert story was uh, when Cigna built their own golf course for client entertainment. Bob said, Hubert, you can't speak out of turn. This is a very important event for Cigna. Please keep your mouth shut. Defer any questions. So Hubert got up with some prepared remarks, and for some reason, they opened up the floor for questions. And Hubert Green was asked, well, what do you think of the golf course? To which Hubert replied, Reese Jones never did a golf course that didn't have to be redone. <laughs> that was the end of Hubert with Cigna. So in 1989, Bob left Cigna and joined a team that wanted to build a golf course in Mattapoisett. And we all know how good the economy was in 1989 and 1990. So Bob left the Grand Island Project and came to the We Met Fund. And we're lucky we found him. So think about it this way, with all of what I just described. By the time Bob got to the We Met Fund, his work experience provided him the skills of writing, storytelling, handling the media, of which Bob was extremely adept, promotion and marketing, sales, entrepreneurship, event management, and understanding and learning from adversity. Bob really was the Swiss Army knife that the We Met Fund needed in 1991. Bob's biggest strength is to be able to tell a story, given his journalism background and all of his experiences. Second most important quality is event management, and Dick will get into that with the way you handled the banquet so well. But if you think about the banquet, that's still an evening of storytelling. Journalists tell stories in captivating ways to command the attention of their audience. Bob told the story of Francis and Eddie so well, the We Met Fund so well, individuals who made We Met what it is, events, as I said, the banquet, and the annual report which Bob started, which was just a compilation of stories that told the common thread that keeps everybody from the We Met Fund together. In person, big or small, Bob was always at events. He was there to represent the We Met Fund. He was there to tell the story. He was there to engage a wider audience. And he did that so well, his personality, his laugh, his easygoing demeanor, and the results speak for themselves. I can go to the videotape here. From when Bob joined the We Met Fund in 1991, scholarship awards have grown from 320,000 to two and a half million. The number of scholars helped has grown yearly from 199 to 468. The endowed awards grew from five to 155. And the value of those awards has grown from $100,000 to $17 million. But here's the number, here are the numbers that matter. The total amount of scholarships awarded in the last 29 years, $33 million. The total number of scholars over the last 29 years, which includes honorary, 3,300. And the total number of scholars who received aid over the last 29 years, 
3,000. Bobby, job well done. So one of the most iconic photographs in WeMet Fun history, especially during Bob's tenure, and there he is, or he just was, or on the back screen, uh, Dick Conley. It's Bobby, Dick Conley, and Arnold Palmer in 1997 with the first of the revamped golf banquets, which have turned out to be the largest golf dinners annually in the country. And nobody knows Bob better with those dinners and has had probably had more conversations with him on the phone over the years than our next speaker, Dick Conley. Bobby was here for 29 years, and uh, he and I have worked together very closely for all 29 years. John reeled off the statistics, uh, which are actually absolutely incredible. Uh, when I think of Bob, I think of someone that knows more about golf history than anybody I, I've ever known. I, I consider myself a, a golf buff, but this guy's got more history in his mind than most people have read in their lifetimes. So we always get a big kick out of those conversations. I'm going to go right to the, the dinner that Arnold came. We were trying to get Arnold to come to uh, be our, our first honoree. And it was <coughs> November, and we still hadn't put it together. And in six weeks, well, we put the whole deal together. And the, the dinner actually took place on, on January 2nd, 1997. <coughs> And there were 1,600 people there. And it all came together in that short period of time. But I wanted to mention that with that dinner, uh, Jim Dodson, the fellow that wrote Final Rounds, and then went on to write uh, Golfer's Life about Arnold. Arnold's wife, Winnie, asked me to call uh, Jim Dodson because she had read Final Rounds, and she thought his writing style was perfect for writing the history of Arnold Palmer. So that, that night after the banquet, the deal was cut upstairs, which was the Sheridan, and that's how Dodson met Arnold, and that's how the a Golfer's Life, the book, came together. The other thing I would say, too, is that Arnold next morning left to go out to the Mayo Clinic to have his prostate removed. Now, I mention that only because that's just typical of Arnold Palmer. I don't know anybody that would have come to the banquet to start with if they were facing major surgery. He never said a word. He came and flew out, did his thing at the, at the banquet, flew out, and obviously he, he did well after the operation. I could go on here and tell story after story about <coughs> Mr. Palmer, but he was the guy that set the, set the banquet in, in, in style, and Bobby picked up on it. We've had Jack Nicholas, Greg Norman, George H. W. Bush, Curtis Strains, Gary Player, Mark O'Mara, Annika Sorenstein, Nancy Lopez. Now, I mention that because Bob and I always talk about naming an organization that have had that list of speakers, <coughs> of, of honorees, to represent the organization. This is a little caddy fund in Massachusetts. And the whole thing started with a 20-year-old caddy beating the two greatest players in the world at the country club and bringing the common man into golf. Uh, so I'm, I've been very happy to be working with Bob because he, he knows more about event planning than anybody I've ever seen. He's very good at that, uh, and he enjoys doing it. A couple of things also about Bob that we shared with how are we going to handle each speaker? What do they like? What do they need? And what we, we agreed to do is I would always pick up the speaker from the airport, or the honoree from the airport, and many times Sheila Feeney, who's worked for me for many years, many of you know him, would come with me. And the conversations we would have before the, the speak, the honoree spoke, were just amazing. Uh, just remember one with, with uh, Greg Norman. I really wasn't a big Greg Norman fan until I got to know him, and he came and spoke at that dinner. Nip, he recognized everybody at the head table, never used a note for the whole talk, and has been very supportive of the fund ever since. Another quick note, Gary Player, after he spoke, sat down beside me, 
some of you guys in the room remember this, he handed me a check for $100,000 for the fund. Now these are things that people like that do that no one knows about. And of course being a, a, a guy that loved golf so much, and Bobby and I played this stuff off, and we were trying to recruit other speakers to come. Obviously when we gave them the list of the names that had been here, I remember Ben Crenshaw, when we talked to him, he said, look, if it was good enough for Arnold Palmer, it's obviously good enough for me. So that, that started the whole thing going. And you mentioned Teresa. I just say, Bobby, you married way up. <laughs> but, but Teresa's at all these meetings and all these dinners, and she's always in the background and watching everything and making sure that he doesn't make a big mistake or, or whatever. <laughs> so she's been right by your side and she's been a, a great partner. The other thing Bob and I worked very closely on was the We Met Memorial Golf Tournament. So he, from the year he got here, which is 29 years ago, he was right involved in the middle of that tournament for years and years. I see a couple of our former champions here. Where's Frankie Banner? Yeah, Frankie only won it five times. <laughs> but anyways, those that, and, and I thoroughly enjoyed running that tournament along with Bob because he knew so much about golf and how to deal with the press. Back then, we used to get significant write-ups in the papers <clears throat> because of his expertise of working with the, with the media. Now, you hardly see golf mentioned at all, at least on the eminent level. Uh, but that was a great experience for me, and I know it was a great experience for him. Uh, I think I've probably said enough, but all I can tell you is that it's been my pleasure working with him for these 29 years, and, and John read off the statistics on how much money we've given away from the start. I mean, you think about it, $320,000 to two and a half million in one year. 320 when he first came and two and a half when he left. Bobby, thank you, enjoy the, enjoy your retirement. Okay, and we're still checking things out in the office, make sure you haven't stolen anything. <laughs> The next speaker uh, is somebody who's uh, very close to Bob. Uh, I got to know him, well, Bob has pictures in his office of his kids. And I asked Bob, you know, oh, how old are your sons when I first started working for him back in 1998, 99, somewhere in there. And I said, is, is Matt 12? And he goes, no, he's 17. <laughs> <laughs> and your son, John? Yeah, he's 19. So, um, Bobby, I'm glad you kept updated pictures of your sons. Uh, but, but more so, there was one time I walked into his office and he was just beside himself. And I said, well, what happened? He goes, oh, Matt cracked up another car. <laughs> well, Matt's certainly grown up. Uh, and as they say, the apples don't fall far from the trees. Matt is in, uh, in sports communications himself. Uh, he's a director of communications with Showtime Sports down in New York. Uh, and I'd like to bring up Bob's youngest son, Matt Donovan. Thanks everyone for being here. It means a lot to have this event here at Wollaston, a place that's been so important to our family for uh, three generations now. Um, my dad's had a lot of unique jobs, as, uh, as Dolan said over the years, from Harvard golf coach to PR for a hockey team when he can't skate. Um, but I always remember his career as running the We Met Fund, um, a job that he's had since I was eight years old. Um, and when I was a kid, people would ask, you know, what does your father do for a living? And it was always a little difficult to explain. Um, sure, I could explain the basics of his job description, but it wasn't until I was a little bit older and I learned firsthand how special the we, we Met Fund was, and later what my dad meant to the growth and success of this organization. Um, from day one, the We Met Fund was always a family affair for us. My mom, my brother, and I would volunteer at the, at the annual banquet, an event that was really my dad's passion project since he started. We'd stuff goodie bags for the We Met Memorial, and I'd tag along to various events to pretend that I was chipping in. Uh, in junior high school, in high school, I'd volunteer at the marathon and wake up in, at four in the morning, which as you know, for a, a teenager was not an easy task. Um, but I always thought how lucky my dad was to work in an industry that he loved and to work around people that shared so much mutual respect. It always felt like the We Met Fund and really the, the Massachusetts golf community um, was an integral part, to, part of our lives. 
But my, uh, my first real exposure to the true impact of Francis we met and my dad's connection and love for the fund came one summer when I volunteered for the We Met Fund uh, in high school. Now, to be honest, I think this was a position that my dad created just to appease my mom and get me out of the house. Um, I drive around to clubs throughout Massachusetts and try to spread awareness about the fund and meet with caddies and um, people in the bag room um, and get to visit some pretty awesome golf courses at the time. It was a great summer gig. And everywhere I went, I introduced myself as Bob's son and was immediately met with open arms. Some would look at me and say, you look just like him. I was never sure if that was a compliment or not. <laughs> uh, but, but what was abundantly clear was how much my dad was loved and respected in this tight-knit golf community. I also saw firsthand how many people were passionate about the fund and what it stood for. From the prestigious golf clubs like the Country Club and Hyannisport to even small municipal courses, Everyone I met was genuinely interested in supporting the fund and shared my dad's passion in helping it grow. For my dad, work didn't stop when he left the office. I remember one, uh, one winter down in Naples and he was reading the manuscript for the greatest game ever played while we're sitting on the beach. Mark Frost had asked him to edit and review an early draft of the manuscript and here he was sitting on the beach with an 800 page, three rain binder, <laughs> scribbling notes in the margins. He was glued that vacation. But if you know anything about like my mother, she knew to took the binder away when it was time for family gatherings. I always remember him telling us that that book really read like a movie script. And sure enough, a few years later, Mark Frost's novel became a Disney movie. And that film generated remarkable awareness for the fund and its mission. That also led to my father's one and only Hollywood credit when he appeared as an extra in the film as Francis headed out for a playoff against Harry Varden and Ted Ray. It was an unremarkable and short-lived Hollywood career. <laughs> Golf has always been kind of in our family's blood, even though none of us are very good at the game. My brother and I are fourth generation caddies. We both spent summers at St. Kitty Head uh, Caddy Camp in Nantucket. My father caddied here at Wollaston, my grandfather and great-grandfather caddied at Essex and Myopia. Because of this, I remember how proud my dad was when he was able to create an endowed scholarship in my grandfather's name in 2013. After years of asking people to donate, he knew it was time to give back. And it was especially meaningful for him to have the, to have the endowed scholarship named after my grandfather, J.J. Donovan, whose passion and respect for the game, particularly caddies, was unlike anyone I've ever met. I look forward to contributing to the Donovan Family Scholarship Fund and continuing that legacy. Just don't hit me up for any money tonight, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> my dad has had an, had an amazing impact on my career. He's the reason I went to school for PR and communications, and one of the main reasons I got into sports television and have a job at Showtime. I tag along to We Met Fun events and witness his mastery of event management, how he works a room, and how he somehow remembers everyone's name a skill that I'm still working on. Mm -hmm. I'd get to see how, how he effortlessly, effortlessly interacts with celebrities and golf royalty and really people from every walk of life. I can only hope that some of these skills and lessons have rubbed off on me as I continue my own career. Uh, in, in closing, the We Met Fund is losing a great one, but I know his uh, heart is dear to this cause and he'll continue to be involved for the rest of his life. And I know that because of his passion and hard work, the Friends of the Met Fund is set up for uh, continued success for decades to come. Well, it uh, wouldn't be an official night if we didn't hear from the person who has been named Bob's successor. Uh, somebody who's worked with Bob since 2003. I actually overlapped with Colin during our intern years at the We Met Fund. Please welcome the uh, new executive director of the We Met Fund, interesting to say, Colin McGuire. Thank you, John, and, uh, and thank you, Matt, as well. Thank you, Dick. Um, it was interesting, you know, we've, we've heard a few of the different sides of, of Bob and how it relates. We Met Fund and Bob, but also Bob and his family and how his family relates to the We Met Fund. And one of the things that Matt did mention was the, was the uh, Donovan Family Endowed Scholarship. And Bob, as a retirement gift tonight, I just want you to know that 
many of your friends and the uh, individuals on the WeMet Fund board have put in some donations, and there will be uh, at least an $11,000 addition to the Donovan family in Dallas dollars. So thank you. Bob's been a, a staple at the WeMet Fund for 29 years, and, and it all started in 1991. Denny Goodrich was the president who hired Bob Donovan, and uh, Denny has told me, I don't think either of them thought that it was going to last 29 years, but uh, <laughs> great move, Denny. Um, back then, it was, it was just a staff of two. Uh, you know, it's, it's grown, it's shrunk, it's grown again, and it's always been a relatively small group uh, on staff at the We Met Fund, whether it was the Golf House in Weston or the Golf House in Norton. Um, but Bob remained the center. As you've seen in a lot of these pictures, he did everything. He was rolling up his sleeves at the first golf marathon. He was talking with presidents and golf's greats, getting ready for our annual banquet, which has become a, a centerpiece of our organization. Um, you know, things like, you know, Michelle, Michelle's very familiar, we transitioned to digital, but these white full, these white uh, pads, <laughs> all the interview kids, all mapped out here, 180 every single year, Bob. Um, just puts passion and sweat and tears into it every single day, every single project. Um, and no matter the program, it was always about the relationships and getting closer to people. Um, and for me, just to, again, speak a little bit about the day-to-day, -day, the, the people that were close to Bob in the office. Um, 2004, a few people here know, saw a reorganization of the staff, and that went from a staff down to just three plus Bob. Um, we rallied behind him, did the best we could to then pitch in when he took medical leave and, uh, and beat cancer. Um, so that was, that was special for us to be able to do. Um, another member of that foursome, is Cheryl Bailey, uh, who I go on to marry a few years later. Um, Cheryl moved on in her career once we started to get serious. Uh, but Bob was such a, an important part of either one of our lives or both of our lives, day in and day out for over five years. Um, we asked Bob to be our officiant when we got married, and that meant a lot to us. Plenty of light moments, you know, Cheryl, uh, Danielle's here, I'm not sure if, uh, if Dave's here, but former staff, John Dolan was on staff. Um, regardless, Bob always made time uh, for, for lunch, uh, away from his desk, and encouraged anyone whose little stomach was growling uh, to join him. We talk Boston sports, we mix in plenty of Tennessee talk, Bob, um, and obviously golf. And, Many times it would just turn into a we met fun brainstorm session and that just kind of spoke to how everyone was just so comfortable just talking around Bob and just hanging out with him. Um, food was special regardless, uh, but Bob never ate at his desk or in his car. He didn't like the potential mess and it was certainly a disservice if it was a specially prepared leftover or a sandwich from Teresa. <laughs> so he took pride in that, Teresa. Um, and when he didn't bring his lunch, didn't matter if he'd been to that deli or that restaurant a dozen times before. He'd always say, so, what's good here? Or, <laughs> or what do you recommend? He knew what he was ordering, but he just wanted to start it up with them. Um, after lunch, if he went out by himself, he was always trying to pick up a bag of cookies from Subway, McDonald's, a mom and pop. And if, you know, if, even if we didn't eat lunch with him, he'd poke his head into our offices up and down the hallway and say, you look like you need a cookie. <laughs> They're good for you, right, Bob? <laughs> we'll all miss the chocolate candy bowl in his office when our sweet tooth got a craving at 2 or 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. But at the end of the day, you didn't leave his office with just candy. Uh, you were better prepared for the next conversation with a donor or prepped for a meeting. Candy was an excuse to pick his brain and learn about his experiences. It was great when he'd lean back in his chair and say, sit down for a minute, just sit down. Um, you know, back in the day, the We Met Fund used to, and then he would go on to say how it used to be, and maybe how he had transitioned in some way, or just to give you the backstory and set the stage for how we were thinking about something We Met related now. Um, and that was, uh, you know, many conversations like that when we'd sit in traffic. Bob and I would carpool an awful lot together, and, um, and it was great to have that time with him. And over we, uh, we talked about the printed word, always bring, everybody knows this, always bring a printed copy for Bob. And bring one for yourself, too. Just lay it out in front of him, and he'd help you make the printed word better. Um, John and Matt both spoke to that, and, uh, and that was special. Um, the, written, the written word was special, but it was easy to hear Bob on the phone. Uh, getting excited on the phone. He was always excited talking to constituents. Uh, 
whether it was catching up with a retired director coming to an event, a friend of a friend, many of you introduced new people to the We Met Fund, you said call Bob Donovan, and he'd tell that person how the We Met Fund worked. Or maybe it was just Dick Conley, just breaking down Ben Hogan's swing as the greatest swing ever. <laughs> More likely it was Dick calling Bob up the night before the banquet or the weekend before the banquet to say, you have room for my three buses of Woburn Grammar School friends, right? I promised them all seats. Bob was, Bob was always good for needling like that. And uh, you know, when, then when people came in in person to Golf House, whether it was a donor, whether it was you know, the 150 We Met Scholar applicants that were coming to Golf House to interview, Bob put the same passion into that, gave them a tour of the We Met Museum. And if you got the Bob tour, you were pretty lucky, that Bob version. And uh, personally, I, I experienced the Bob version of an awful lot of things, and uh, I appreciate that how to engage our donors, appreciate our volunteers, and pay attention to those details uh, with any of our programs. Uh, thank you, Bob, for taking a chance on me. Thanks for including me and others on staff in so many of your discussions uh, and trusting us over the years with so many responsibilities. The office will be different without you. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not talking about that we won't need these anymore for, for every event. Uh, the supply closet does not need those, but uh, you are an incredible piece of the We Met Fund success, as we spoke to in specifics over the last 29 years. The success of thousands of We Met scholars, and you were a good friend to many staffers over the years. So um, you will always be in the We Met Fund history books, even if you're not in the hallways, Bob. Come on up. Such a big surprise, and uh, uh, a couple of notes here, and a lot of them have been already covered. That's <laughs> um, you know, we're so happy to have have you all here tonight. It's so nice for you all to come out and to be able to have our we met friends with family members and our uh, personal friends. It's great to kind of connect the whole group together. Uh, thanks so much for those of you who made the, the gift to the Donovan Family Scholarship in, in honor of my dad. Uh, and what, what's kind of special about it is each, as you many of you know, each of the endowed scholarships, there's a different um, restriction for the recipient and, and we wanted it to be for a young person who actively participates in We Met events. So those guys get, better get out there and be in the marathon and help us out with this event and that event. And, uh, we like those kids who really want to get totally involved and give back. Uh, again, as Matthew said, happy to be here at Wallace and the family's been involved for so many years. And uh, uh, as you look around at the great improvements that we've made here, uh, mom and dad would be really happy to see it. Uh, thanks to the prior speakers, Johnny Dolan has been kiddingly referred to as my third son and Colin as my fourth son, that sort of thing. <laughs> And uh, they all did a terrific job, uh, J uh, John and uh, Dick Conley. Uh, Dick is, uh, is such a pro and he's, uh, you know, we share so many similar passions and Dick, thank you so much for all you do. Uh, uh, Colin, um, it, it's been just a, an incredible pleasure to watch Colin evolve and develop and uh, way back in 2004 we had a period, Colin had come on board as a, uh, as an intern, and I immediately saw, boy, this kid is talented, he's smart, he's driven, he's dedicated, and uh, we came to a period of time where we had, uh, we had to do some cuts to the staff, and, and I said to people, I said, don't cut this young man. We will need this young man in the future. 16 years later, he's here. Thank you very much. about the, the, the stats of the growth, uh, somebody said to me a few weeks ago, uh, it, it, as you're winding down, you should take some time to reflect, and, and, and I did, and I thought of so many wonderful people who have been involved and, and really important to the initiatives that we did, which, which really made the growth come, come across. Dick, of course, was Mr. Everything to the We Met Fund. He's the epitome of giving back, supporting us, and so many other charities in so many very special ways. The banquet, you can't say enough about the banquet, but it really has branded us 
and it's uh, it, it's the event that everybody talks about when they think about the We Met Fund that Dick has helped in so many other ways. Uh, Denny Goodrich, uh, Denny, uh, it, it, as, as was said, Denny hired me way back in 1991. He's been a great mentor and a friend, 38 years on the board, so many committees he helped in so many ways. Denny, I'm so thrilled you could be with us tonight. Thank you. We lost three uh, former presidents in the last 18 months. All of them were alums. All of them, like so many of our other presidents, made great contributions. Uh, John mentioned a little bit earlier about Bill Foley. And Bill, of course, was a Wallace member, former Mass Am champ. And uh, uh, Bill and a fellow who also died this year named Jack Carl, they rekindled the old Par Club into the We Met Society in 1992, 1993. What they set up has produced over the years 200 lifetime members. Many of them have gone on to create endowed scholarships. Uh, Bill contributed in many other ways. And following up on Bill with the We Met Society was Todd Wetzel in the back of the room. And Todd brought in and recruited a lot of members for us, too. Todd, thank you. <laughs> what I remember most about Bill was uh, when, when Bill Bill talked, he frequently would, would get into talking about how much golf had given to him in his life and how important it was for him to attempt to give back. And I'm sure many of us in this room can relate to that thought. I know, Dick, you feel that way and so many others do. Bill said that he met his wife through golf. He got his business through golf. His friends came through golf and he loved the game. For me and my family, it's a similar story. I met my lovely wife, Teresa, through my good friend, Jack Callahan. And Jack also, interestingly enough, was the person who got Matthew to go down to a big football weekend at the University of Florida, where, where he ended up meeting his lovely wife, Leanne. Uh, uh, my son, John, is in Florida and can't be with us tonight. And, but Matt mentioned that you know they were down in the caddy camp at Sankety Head, and they both loved it. And Leanne is a, a very nice player, played on her high school team. So it's fun for the five of us to get together and play. It might, you know, we're not supposed to sneak that fifth out into the group, but we, we we'll play down at Windstar, and it's really neat to do that occasionally. Um, and so many of, you know, of course, my career, I I owe that to uh, people at Wollaston here who directed me to start at the Globe. And, uh, I, and again, so many of our best personal friends are golf people, and my family has been so incredibly supportive over the years. And like Bill, I can't give enough back to the game that he gave to me. My dad was a great mentor, got me started in the game, very special person. And my friend Kevin Walsh, uh, Kevin can't be with us tonight, he had some health problems, but Kevin got me my first job at the Globe, and then I went down with Kevin to be his assistant at Cigna. Uh, he, he, he guided me in so many ways along in my career. A couple of other former presidents I think we should chat about. Uh, Steve Buckley and Charlie Fox. Uh, Janice Fox is here tonight. They were critical to our growth at, at, at a key stage. Steve put together our endowed scholarship program and he was really proud of that. Charlie was critical to the development of our inner city program in Boston. And 22 years later, we've had 150 kids come out of that, and we have 23 endowed scholarships that are now specifically dedicated to inner city kids. Charlie, thank you. I know you're up above and we love you. <laughs> Charlie was involved in the uh, fundraising for our first golf uh, house building in Weston, and a gentleman named Bob McDonald. I was hoping Bob could be here tonight, but you all know Bob oversaw the construction of the project. He was in the original class of We Met Scholars back in 1949, 70 years ago. He's one of the greatest gentlemen I've ever met, and uh, uh, I'm really proud to have known him. Um, Charlie and, and Steve were involved in that first bank, and of course, so much with Dick that what he did with bringing Arnold in. And Peter Mache was the chair of that first banquet, went on to chair many others. Together, that, that group brought in so many sponsors and sold so many tables, and then uh, Greg Galia so nicely has succeeded. Uh, Peter Mason has done a nice job. Uh, Tommy Reardon, our dear friend Tommy, uh, ran point for Peter. Uh, 
working on many of those suppliers to TJ's to become sponsors. Uh, Tommy's not doing well, but we remember him and thank him for all he's done over the years. The Endowed Scholarship Program has been a huge success for us, big plus. It became part of the development program. Peter Mace, Jeff Heiberger, Rich Barrett, Dick Riley, Duffy Brent, and others guided it along. You'll hear these names. Uh, Ted Hansbury also played a big role in captaining the spirit of golf events that created endowed scholarships, and Cheryl uh, was a, helped us so much in those years. Walt, Walt Lank, uh, um, and also I should mention Colin and the staff has done so much work over the last couple of years on the annual fund and the alumni fund, and that's just taken off, as it should be, and as we get more mature as an organization, <laughs> Uh, that's becoming a better source of fundraising. Walt Lankow introduced the marathon to us way back. We had our first one in 1993. Ted Kennerson uh, was the president. Denny Goodrich, Jim Devaney, Walter, and so many others. They recruited 40 teams to play in the marathon that first year. It was incredible. And we raised $120,000. We were flabbergasted. In the 27 years since, it's raised over $6.5 million. Much of it is net. Uh, we've had a lot of good friends playing it, do the fundraising in it, and if Michael Zemetrovich was going to be here tonight, I'm not sure if Michael was here, but he's uh, played 23 straight times, he's been the leading fundraiser many times, he's our WeMet Chair up at Tedesco, and he'll be our WeMet Chair of the Year next year. Uh, Kramer, uh, Kramer has been such an incredible partner to us over the years. Uh, the late Tom Martin was a, a great friend to the We Met Fund. They put all these videos and special presentations for the banquet, our public service announcements, many other things together. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, we are internally grateful to them. Special thanks also to Ken London, who was the producer, and our good friend Mike McNally, who contributed his great skills doing the voiceover for the videos. Thank you, Mike. Club Relations and Bank Tech, that's really where the rubber hits the road for the WeMet Fund. It's our biggest fundraiser. 70, uh, 25,000 people from 70 clubs contribute each year, but you have to work for it. We've had many Club Relations members, uh, Club Relations chairmen, a lot of fantastic WeMet chairmen at the individual clubs. Duncan Bratton is heading it up now along with Colin and Jeff Murphy. And they face some serious challenges, but they've worked out a terrific plan, and I know they're going to make it bigger and broader, and the future is just great in that regard. Every, all of this is about getting the funds together to go forward and meet the unbelievable needs we have for the scholarships. That's what's most important here. And we've been able to grow because of the efforts of all of these people in all these different ways, and we've been able to broaden what we do every year. I'd like to remember Jim Sullivan, who was the scholarship chair for many years. Anne Marie Tobin followed him. Jim Moriarty took great pride in what he did. But the, the key person is Michelle Edwards, who's our scholarship director. She just does a phenomenal job. Michelle, thank you for all. switch gears just a, a little bit. Way back in 1963, I was a 15-year-old kid, and my dad took me to my first golf tournament, the, the U.S. Open at TCC. Back in those days, of course, we all loved Arnold Palmer and wanted to go see Arnold. And they played the, uh, on Saturday, they played a double round, 36 holes, and the tournament actually ended on Saturday. And uh, Arnold didn't win, but guess what? We got to see him an extra day because he was in a playoff with three people, including Julius Boris, who went on to win the next day. So we went over about an hour before uh, tee off, and we were walking through the quadrangle area there at TCC, and a friend of my dad's had been a great athlete, a well-known fellow from Brookline, and he saw Mr. We Met down at the far corner. He said, let's go over and say hi to Mr. We Met. I didn't know. So, uh, so we walked over, and here's this stately-looking gentleman, and he had on like a straw hat and a seersucker jacket, and a very nice bow tie, and uh, uh, and we were introduced to him, and he immediately turned to me, this little kid, and he said, "Master Donovan," and you know, this, he was from that old school that's called the kid master. I don't, Dick, you probably remember some of that from back when. So nice to meet you. Do you play golf? Is this your, are you enjoying the tournament? I was like, wow. And I walked away with my dad and said, gee, what a nice man. 
hand. Mm -hmm. Well, 28 years later, I got to come on board and be responsible for preserving his legacy and, and working with uh, the We Met and Lowry families, and it's been such a joy to have them at all of our events and uh, come do special presentations with us. Uh, Cynthia uh, Lowry, Eddie's daughter is here. Cynthia Wilcox, Cynthia right here, thank you. <laughs> Cynthia and her husband Tom. Uh, and, and you know, the story of Francis and Eddie is really the great one in golf and it's the foundation on which the We Met Fund was built. And you know, we were so lucky and it was so exciting to see Mark Frost, as you know, Dick said, and, and John said, do the book, The Greatest Game Ever Played, and uh, the movie. And it's done so much to make the next generation aware of what Mr. We Met is and what he contributed to the game. And, and, and it passes on to the We Met Fund constantly. When we do our interviews with the kids, they all quote from The Greatest Game Ever Played, the movie. Um, also, going back to the banquet, uh, I, I need to th think about... Uh, Pardon me, I got a little ahead of myself here. <laughs> Speaking of greatest game, I need to just take a minute and, and, and thank Denny Kelly and the great folks at uh, uh, Burns and Levinson. Over the years, they helped us with licensing, contracts, bylaws, special arrangements, and also Jackie Crosby and the Pope folks that she works with on the financial side. We owe a big thanks to them. Dick, thanks for talking about the We Met Memorial. It was great to work with you and your friend, the late Dick Foley, and all the good stuff that he did. It was a terrific tournament, and Frank Ben and all the great players that we had in it. Also, you may not know it as well, but there was a gentleman named Jim Murphy who was on our board for a bunch of years, and he started an eight-club tournament down at Duxbury that ran for about 10 years, and it, most everybody played. I saw some pictures, and in knickers and shirt and tie, and he started it appropriately on the 100th anniversary of Mr. We Met's birth in, in 93, so that was pretty nice. And then the, one of the great moments, of course, was the centennial in 2013, uh, and there were so many special events and so many special features uh, and people contributing to it. Dick Riley and Terry Kennedy were the We Met presidents in that time, and they, were, they went back and forth as the centennial chairs great committee headed up at Club Relations with the Centennial Bag Tag and also uh, Duffy Brent and Alan Peckham, the Centennial Campaign. Uh, special thanks to all of them, but especially our folks in the office, the staff who did so much, Colin and Danielle Portbay. Daniel, thank you. You worked hard on that event. And finally, uh, I leave knowing that my time here was sort of a bridge between eras. Over the past year, Jim Blue, just finished up as our president, led us through a comprehensive strategic process that will launch us into a really exciting new era. The fund is in great shape with a We Met alum, Jim Moriarty, as our president, and another We Met alum, Colin McGuire, as our new executive director. Colin is hardworking. Uh, very dedicated, has all the tools to bring this to the, to the next level. And he's assembled a wonderful team, the We Met staff, and I'd like to ask the staff and the former staffers just to please stand up. Again, uh, I couldn't thank We Met enough. Uh, John talked a little bit about some of the things that I had done, and I was just so lucky to be able to find a way to coalesce, and, and it was so personally rewarding for me to produce events and write and do videos and all that sort of stuff. But it was all towards the end result, the mission, helping uh, so many wonderful kids, getting to know them, the families, and uh, it, it, it was terrific. The future looks really very bright. Uh, with the new, some of the new initiatives like the career fair and special days at the college, at the colleges where we bring the alumni and the students from a particular school together. It's about engaging them more and getting them more involved in the future. Thomas Murphy puts that together. Thank you. It's really special. And then finally, it may sound a little odd, but the happiest day for me is the day when Jackie brings in an enormous pile 
of checks for me to sign, 450 of them. And I, I look at each name and the amount, and it's like, wow, boy, is that grown. Uh, and Jackie always kids me that I'm going to have writer's cramp. I don't mind that one, Jackie. <laughs> In closing, I'd like to propose a toast and paraphrase the word of, words of one of our greatest banquet speakers, Mr. George Herbert Walker Bush. Scott, you know where we're going with this one. <laughs> and, and may your lives and the future of the We Met Fund be full of birdies and eagles. Thanks to all for coming. Thanks to all who helped along the way. And thanks for the memories.